it's your girl Shanta J. Thank you so much for tuning into my channel. So appreciate you guys stopping by. A lot of you guys have been in my comments asking me to do a video like this one. This is the first of many to come. It's a long awaited and a long overdue video. But I'm nervous because I'm going to be completely honest in this video. I respect honesty and I just want to keep the integrity of this channel. I know a lot of you guys respect my opinion on fragrances and that makes it even more nerve wracking because a lot of times you guys just literally take my word for it and you just go out, spend your hard earned cash. And because of that, there's so much pressure to make sure that I get it right. And I'm being completely honest and I'm like very specific about everything. So I'm looking here, I have five perfumes. They're all Middle Eastern perfumes. These are all of our fragrances that I've been very, very invested into learning more about. I know you guys want to know what I think about it. So I'm going to stop talking because I'm right. Anyway guys, let's jump right into this video. So the first scent that I'm going to start out with is the one that started it all, which is the original Yara fragrance. I was most excited to smell this one because I've heard so many good reviews on this one. The thing that I noticed though is that there are so many different perspectives on this scent. And my thought was, wow, it must be a very complex scent because there's just so many different thoughts on this but the most popular opinion that i hear is that it smells like strawberry milkshake obviously <laughs> that sounds amazing and i really wanted to experience this scent but before i go into my own little thoughts on this one because i have my thoughts on this one let's just uh, talk about the facts yara debuted back in 2020 it is an amber vanilla scent it opens up with notes of Orchid, heliotrope, and tangerine. In the heart, we have gourmand accord, tropical fruits, and in the base, we have vanilla, musk, and sandalwood. Very interesting notes. Now, my first impression of this bottle is that, oh my God, it's so cute and it, it has a lot of weight to it. So it's quite heavy, which I really do appreciate. It's a bit clunky. And it does take up a whole lot of space in my collection, but the payoff makes it so worth it. Now, the cap is a little bit stubborn, so you kind of have to put some manpower in there to get it off. Now, when I smelled this fragrance for the first time, I was a bit disappointed. There was a period of letdown for me because I was truly expecting this beautiful strawberry milkshake scent. I've always kind of wanted to smell like that, and I thought, yes, yes, here it is. But when I removed the cap and I smelt it, I got no milkshake. I actually went through a period where I thought I got the wrong fragrance. So I'm still a bit confused about the whole comparison to strawberry milkshake. I've heard a lot of people talk about this maceration period and I'm really, really hoping that putting this away for some time is going to give me my strawberry milkshake, but I can't see how this is going to transform into strawberry milkshake at all. What I do get here is a tropical floral scent that pulls a bit powdery. There's also this aquatic salty undertone. There's this slight marshmallow puff accord under all of that. My only regret is that they didn't play up that gourmand accord a little bit more. It would have been so bomb. That whole gourmand touch is very light. It's very elusive. Sometimes I wonder if I'm like making it up in my head because it just kind of comes and goes. Sometimes you smell it, sometimes you don't, which I find very interesting. I would say that the most redeeming aspect of this fragrance is actually in the dry down. So I had to wait a bit to really appreciate the scent. The Dredon has this beautiful airy musk that really lingers and really jives nicely with the other notes in this fragrance. Now, if this fragrance tickles you, it checks off all your boxes, I'm happy for you. If you're getting that beautiful, sweet strawberry milkshake, if you're getting all the other things that people are talking about, I am like sincerely happy for you. I am not getting that, all right? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what a lot of people 
have suggested, which is allow the fragrance to sit down, macerate, mature a little bit, and revisit it and see if my opinion changes because I know maceration is a real thing, okay? I've seen it and I've smelt it with my own nose. Now, the lasting power and the sillage is quite average. It really creates a nice little bubble around the wearer, which I could definitely appreciate. It's a fragrance that you could use for everyday wear. You could wear this to the office. You could wear this on a date with your little boyfriend or whatnot. It's a very versatile fragrance, which I do like. I actually think it's a perfect for warm weather. It just wears like a warm weather fragrance. Now, I got mine off Amazon and I paid 29 bucks for it, but I know you could also find this on Fragrance Night for 25 bucks, so it's a little bit more affordable, but I have Amazon Prime. I don't pay for shipping, baby, and I like the next day shipping, so I went with Amazon. You know, that's just me. But anyway, guys, we're going to move on to the next fragrance. The next fragrance that I'm going to talk about here is the white one. Yara Moi or Yara Moi. I'm not really sure how you say that. Uh, this is obviously a flanker to the original pink Yara fragrance. Now, this came on Ratchet. Like, I was so upset when this one came because exactly how I'm going to present it to you guys is how it was presented to me. I'm thinking about returning it because I don't think it's cool at all that I have to deal with this. But this is how it came. And everything else was like that. Literally like that. The Like all of this. Okay, so it came broken. But, you know... Things happen. Yara Moi or Yara Moi. Not really sure. You guys could correct me down below. Let me know how it's really pronounced. This fragrance debuted in 2022. This fragrance opens up with notes of jasmine and peach. In the heart, we have caramel and amber. And in the base, we have patchouli and sandalwood. Sounds freaking amazing, right? <laughs> guys. I thought this bottle went off. Between the package being all messed up and the scent coming from this perfume, I literally thought they sent me a freaking old bottle. But as I did my research, I realized that it's not old. <laughs> this is the scent of this fragrance. And I'm going to spray it just for you guys. I'm going to spray it to make sure that's really what I get the opening is so promising as i smell it i'm getting the white florals there's something citric there but there are some tropical fruits here it literally took two minutes before i was like hold up what is that <laughs> guys and i hate to do this this has a strange frito accord it smells like corn chips that pulls very salty it's very strange as the fragrance progresses that frito accord it gets stranger and it gets stronger overwhelming all the other beautiful things that i appreciated in the first couple of seconds of this fragrance i mean the frito accord completely takes over this scent and i forget what i even like about this scent there's really not a lot that I want to add because I don't want to go on and on about how bad I think this perfume is. So we're going to cut it there. If you're going to buy this scent, please, please be aware of that accord. I don't enjoy beating up perfumes here on my channel. I'm a lover of perfume. I love beautiful perfumes. I like to bring nice perfumes to you guys. Unfortunately, this is one I cannot recommend at all at all i'm probably gonna have to just return this one because i don't even feel good about putting this one up on my mercari now that's my opinion and i'm gonna stick with it unless maceration could do some magic here other than that i no it's a no for me all right yara moi or moi is not for me the next fragrance that i want to talk about here is yara tooth or yara two not really sure once again how they pronounce this scent this is one that I also see a lot of people talking about. I was very, very excited to try this one because of the descriptions um, that I heard on TikTok and on Instagram and just, you know, everywhere, really. This fragrance actually debuted back in 2023. 
Uh, it opens up with notes of mango, coconut, and passion fruit. In the heart, we have heliotrope, jasmine, and orange blossom. And in the base, we have vanilla, cashmere, and musk. Now, oh my God, guys, once again, once again, I am disappointed. This could have been a thing. This could have been something, okay? It had all the right notes. It could have been something so good, but the execution, I must admit, in my opinion, is poor. Oh my God. Guys, please don't kill me. Please, please, because I know there's a bunch of people watching this video and you're just you're, you're probably trying to throw a stone at me right now for saying that. But to go back to this scent, um, I am getting a lot of like tropical fruits. And I think that's the problem. I can't pinpoint one tropical fruit. I thought I was going to get this big juicy mango. I love a big juicy mango note, but I'm not getting that here. I'm just getting like a mishmash of tropical fruits and I don't know what they are. You can find this fragrance for around 22 bucks. And honestly, it kind of smells like that. Now, under that heat of tropical fruits, there is this overwhelming, stuffy powderiness that is just so off-putting to my nose. There's not a lot going on in this fragrance other than what I just described. A bunch of mishmash tropical fruits and this big, overwhelming, stuffy powderiness under that. I want to like it. I really do. But I can't. I, I just can't. That, I mean, that's just my opinion. I'm not going to beat this fragrance up anymore. I think I did a good job doing that. I am sorry. <laughs> but this is just my honest opinion, all right? This is Yara Toos. The next fragrance that I have here is also from the house of Latafa. And this one is called Sandals. I am very impressed with the packaging. I was not expecting something this big and this extravagant. A little bit extra if you ask me, but I'm here for it, all right? All I had to do was kind of put some pressure on the front like so. And it's going to open up. Okay, and there we go. A beautiful, beautiful bottle. So I'm just going to take it out. Okay, so this is what it looks like. The bottle is just gorgeous. Sandals debuted back in 2023. It opens up with notes of mandarin orange and saffron. In the middle, we have tuberose, peach blossom, and rose. And in the base, we have vanilla, patchouli, and suede. I was motivated to buy this scent because I watched this video where it was described as a caramel scent. Like, there was this distinct caramel note. And because of that, I went ahead and I bought this scent um, because who doesn't love a good caramel note? I don't get any caramel at all. The opening is beautiful. Right away, I get that sweet mandarin orange. And I also get what I believe is the suede. I was not expecting suede to pop up this early in the composition but i'm not gonna complain because baby i love me a good expensive suede no and it's all up and through here and i'm definitely feeling that at first i thought maybe it's a saffron because you have saffron in the top but i don't know if this is saffron i'm getting more of a suede vibe so it's like a combination like i said of Sweet mandarin orange and suede. Now, things started to go downhill for me because as you guys may have noticed, there is patchouli in this scent and I'm not a big fan of the way the patchouli is done here. It is not a green patchouli. It's the typical earthy, dusty <laughs> patchouli and I'm not here for it. I'm not here for it and I want to cry so bad because if I had just went on Fragrantica, if I had just went and saw the breakdown and the compared to scents, I would have never gotten this ever, ever, ever because it smells like a fragrance that I really don't like and I've said it so many times on my channel, La Via Belle, okay? It has the same exact scent profile. It really smells very similar to that scent. The more I wear this one, the more I can't distinguish between the two because it's a dupe, in my opinion, to La Via Belle. 
that Spade Note is trying to save the day, but that darn patchouli is like, hell no, I'm a win. And it's winning. It's winning. <laughs> I'm so sad. I literally wanted to cry. I appreciate the fact that it took a different route to get to La Via Belle. It was very nice to get there, but now that we're here, I'm just, I'm not feeling it at all. I'm not feeling it at all. I'm not going to beat up this perfume more than I have to. The last in power is great. This scent is marketed as a unisex fragrance. Um, I'm not really sure if there's a lot of guys that would be comfortable wearing this. I must say that the suede note in there kind of allows it to pull towards the masculine side. But because of that sweet mandarin, um, I'm just not sure if guys would gravitate to this one. Um, they would have to be very secure <laughs> with themselves. It just smells like La Via Belle with an added sweet note. I mean, that's just what I get. The last fragrance that I have here is from the house of Paris Corner. I heard so many good things about this one and I was very, very intrigued. So much so that I just had to get me a bottle. Now, according to Amazon, the top notes here are Italian bergamot, pistachio gelato, hazelnut, sweet rum, and cardamom. In the heart, we have geranium, white peony, maguette, jasmine, raspberry, white peach, and pear. In the base, we have whipped cream, marshmallow, cotton candy, Turkish Delight Accord, cocoa, cedarwood, sandal, and tonka. They went all out, baby. Did you hear those notes? Like, how could you read those notes and not buy this perfume? I didn't care what anybody was going to say. I had to try this scent. The notes sounded so freaking amazing. And let me tell you, the bottle is gorgeous like just look at this all right just like look at the detail omg baby i was so happy to get this one and when i smelt it i was like now this is what i'm talking about this is what i'm talking about middle east in the building this is what i've come to expect from perfumes but i'm gonna spray this on my skin actually I'm going to spray this on my skin. Mm. At first blast, it's fresher than I thought it was going to be to the point that it was pulling even a little bit soapy. I was getting the gourmand notes. I was definitely picking up on that pistachio gelato. And I was getting that nuttiness from the hazelnut. But it was fresh. And I was like, oh my God. Now, this is a unisex scent. So I thought maybe they tried to flip this perfume on his head by making it like a fresh gourmand scent. But baby, no. The freshness does not last. It's going to go into full-blown gourmand territory. And I am here for it it's a very dense sweet scent now as the fragrance progresses all the freshness that i was met with in the top kind of like slowly walked away slowly disappear leaving behind all the gourmand glory now it could be me but as it started to really warm up on this skin it started to smell a bit like pink sugar I was like, am I tripping or does this smell like pink sugar? Of course, without the licorice note. To make it easier for you guys to imagine what this may smell like, I would say that it smells like a more refined version of pink sugar with a pistachio gelato accord or note. Guys, it's lovely though. If you like fragrances that sweet and sugary, if you like fragrances like pink sugar i can't see why you would not like this one the only difference with this is that it smells so much more refined so much more expensive so much more complex it just it's beautiful and it is long lasting this one really does linger i'm definitely happy to have this one it's the only purchase that I've made so far that I'm completely happy with. I love everything about it from the soapy gourmand opening all the way down to the ooey gooey, sweet, heavy, dense, sugary, dry down. Completely love this one. Now, I'm not going to stop here because I think this fragrance 
really opened up my appetite to try more Middle Eastern perfumes. Because what I could say is that these fragrances are very inexpensive. Um, I love the quality. I love the packaging. I mean, they don't skimp on that at all. All. I just think I need to do a little bit more research and do a little bit more independent work rather than going on TikTok and all of that. Maybe I should get down to my roots and really, really find some gems. I'm not going to stop until I have a full blown Middle Eastern collection that I could love. All right. But anyway, guys, that's it for me. Let me know what you think about this haul. Let me know what you think about these Middle Eastern perfumes. I'm dying to see what y'all think about this video. I'm dying to see what y'all think about these fragrances. Anyway, guys, that's it for me. I love y'all. I'll see y'all in the next upload. Bye.